right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again for Exploring Dream Vacations. Um, if you joined in a couple of weeks ago, we had Alyssa Roberts here from Princess Cruise Lines, and we have her back again tonight. Alaska. That's what we're going to concentrate on. And Alaska is a huge dream um, bucket list vacation for many people. So hopefully you're joining us tonight so you can see how wonderful it is. So wonderful that it does sell out. So we're going to talk about 2022 and 2023. Um, we need to book early for Alaska because it is so popular especially if you're wanting to take a cruise tour. Alyssa is going to go over what is a cruise tour and why you need to be doing one, especially from the number one cruise line for Alaska. Yes. So my name is Jennifer Garris. I am the president and travel agent for Travel Pros. And we also have Miss Glenda here, Miss Glenda Stevens from Houston and Travel Pros. Um, each week, we're here to bring you a different destination tour company and cruise line to help you learn about how you can take the perfect vacation, and especially if you book it with Travel Pros. So tonight, I'm going to turn this over to Alyssa, and she's going to give you some wonderful information. Thank you, Jennifer. And hey, Glenda, all the way from Virginia to uh, Houston. So hope you're doing well out there. Anyway, welcome everybody. And I always start my presentations in reminding you to keep calm and call a travel advisor at Travel Pros. They are the experts. They can work you through, walk you through all the changes and challenges and yet all the excitement and the anticipation of your upcoming vacation. So with that, we have um, I thought I would uh, let you know who you're actually listening to if you can't see me. Um, these are some of my fun photos from Alaska. And the first one where I'm holding the antlers, uh, we are on the Tundra Tour in the Denali National Park. And what was kind of funny, we, we stopped and the Tundra Tour is actually like an eight hour tour into the National Park, but you're on and off and on and off and on and off the ship. So at this particular stop, they had moose antlers. I think these are caribou and somebody else's antlers. Well, I couldn't even lift the moose antlers. They were so heavy and they're huge. So whoever took this picture, I just said, bless you, because I said, it's these antlers are going up and literally they snapped the picture and they came straight down. So Fun little stop. So he got me with the antlers. The middle photo, one of my favorite places in Alaska is the Kenai Peninsula, which is actually south of Denali. Highly recommend the opportunity to get there. And I was actually in a small little boat. So we got to go up close and personal to the glacier in the Kenai Peninsula. But what's interesting about this little boat, which is why I'm holding the ice, it didn't make ice. So... <laughs> They had to take big scoops of, you know, netting. They pull out chunks of ice from the glacier, and that is how we chilled our cocktails. So we had glacier margaritas that night, so that was pretty fun and exciting. And then my last thing is panning for gold. And you do this, for the most part, you do it up in Fairbanks, and loads of fun. They teach you how they did it years and years and years ago, and it was very interesting for me the little flecks of gold weigh more than the pebbles in the sand. And so it was very interesting how they teach you how to get rid of all the sand, all the pebbles, and what's left are the flecks of gold. So lots of fun. I highly recommend it. You know, people laugh and say, oh, you know, painting for gold, that's hokey pokey. And my answer is you're absolutely right. And you cannot miss out on that much fun. So I always like to ask the question, get everybody thinking, you know, why do we cruise? Well, overall, if you look at it through time, through, you know, all the way back to Cunard, because I also represent Cunard as well. You know, Cunard's been in operation for over 180 years. So it the whole point of cruising for all this time is being together, 
great food, great entertainment. And Princess is all about the connection. You know, our what we try to think about is how can we get people to connect with their loved ones, their families and friends, all the destinations around the world. And, you know, connecting with new people. And that's half the fun of the vacation is getting to know all the new people on the ship. So as you may or may not know, Princess is the destin destination leader. We are a worldwide cruise vacation option. We hit all seven continents and all over the world. These are all the destinations that we go to. Alaska, Europe, Canada, New England, Panama Canal, Australia, the Caribbean, California coast, Antarctica, South America, Asia, Hawaii, and Mexico. But we are here today to talk about the best destination there is, and it's Alaska. And as Jennifer mentioned, we are the number one cruise line in Alaska, and that is because more passengers choose Princess than any other cruise line. And a couple of accolades, Travel Weekly has given us number one cruise line over 16 years in a row. And the one that I am most proud of is that for 19 straight years, we are the number one recommended brand by the travel community. So Jennifer and Glenda, thank you very much for doing that. So the question is why do people wanna go to Alaska? There's three main reasons and that is the glaciers, the mountains, and the wildlife. And, you know, one of the things that's very unique about Princess is on our cruise tours, which we'll talk about a little bit later, it offers the top two rated attractions in Alaska, and that is Denali National Park and Glacier Bay National Park. But you'll also get the opportunity to see the Inside Passage, we have rail, train and rail experiences, and certainly everyone wants to go to Alaska because of the seafood. So lots of salmon, lots of halibut, lots of crab. So good opportunity. And those are the three main reasons why people go to Alaska. But the question is, why choose Princess? You know, there's other cruise lines that go there, but why choose us? And first of all, understand we have been in the Great Land over 50 years. We have a very strong connection with Alaska and especially for Glacier Bay National Park. When you are cruising, not every cruise line has the opportunity to get into Glacier Bay National Park. And, and part of the rules are they only allow two ships a day and one ship at a time. So all of our cruises, especially cruise tours, we always offer Glacier Bay National Park. And I always sort of relate that to if you go to uh, Yellowstone National Park and you miss Old Faithful, there's something wrong with that picture. So if you're going to go to Alaska, make sure you have the opportunity to sail through Glacier Bay National Park. So we also offer the top rated cruises and cruise tours. And of course, we have our exclusive medallion class experience, which I believe about a month ago we had a little chat about. So I'm sure in Jennifer's um, pile of all of her opportunities and videos, you can learn more about medallion class from um, some of her past videos that we've done. We have an award winning onboard immersion program and it's called North to Alaska and this is where we really get into the culture and the history of Alaska. We have all programs for all different kind of age groups and because of our our connection with Discovery Communication which is Discovery Channel and Animal Planet Channel we have some very unique and special excursions available to our guests. So people will ask me, how do I go to Alaska? How do I see Alaska? Well, for us, there are three ways to see Alaska. First of all, you can see Alaska with what we call a round trip cruise. It's the inside passage. You start and stop from Seattle. It's a Saturday departure or Sunday departure. Get to hit the inside passage. Easy breezy. It's a Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday round trip. Super simple. Now, if you wanna see more of Alaska, then you would do our one-way cruises, which are called Voyage of the Glacier Route. 
And what's very unique about that is instead of doing round trip Seattle, you will travel between Vancouver, British Columbia, and Whittier, which is our port for Anchorage. Now you can either travel northbound from Vancouver to Whittier, or you can travel southbound, which is starting in Whittier, ending in Vancouver. But this actually will travel that 500 miles farther north into Alaska. So it gives you the opportunity to do additional glacier viewing. You can see College Fjord or Hubbard Glacier in addition to Glacier Bay National Park. But if you want to see all of Alaska, that's when we work on and we sell our cruise tours because it incorporates the cruise, which would be the one way voyage of the glacier route. It incorporates our train, which is our rail option, and then it includes the land portion, which is our wilderness lodges. And in 2022 and 23, we will be offering six ships between these three different options. So as I mentioned about the one-way cruises, the Voyage of the Glacier, it's additional uh, glacier viewing, not just Glacier Bay, but you'll also get Glacier Bay or Hubbard Glacier and College Fjord. You will also see the Southeast Ports of Call, and that is considered the inside passage. And we also offer something called Morris Shore and where we are staying late night calls in. So rather than leaving at five o'clock, six o'clock in the evening, we might be staying until eight o'clock, nine o'clock. So you really get some nighttime entertainment as well. Now, this is a really good map to kind of give you the difference in the idea between the Inside Passage and the Voyage of the Glacier. So if you follow the blue line, the blue line starts in Seattle, goes up into the Inside Passage, Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway, turns around and comes back to Seattle. That's the easy breezy one. If you want to do the Voyage of the Glacier route, which is one way, you would start in Vancouver, Ketchikan, Juneau, Skagway, the additional 500 miles north, and end in Whittier, or you can do that in reverse. So that just gives you an idea of the two options that you have available to your um, for you. Now, the ports of call are the same on both itineraries, on cruise itineraries. So first port of call is always Juno. Great for wildlife. This is a lot of times where you're going to do the whale watching. You can go hiking. One of my very favorite things that I've done is I took a helicopter to the top of Mendenhall Glacier. And if you've ever wanted to feel like you're on top of the world, that is it. And because what was really interesting about the, the helicopter ride is every time you thought you were at the top, there was just another glacier to go over. And then there was another one that you went over. And then there was another one. And finally, finally, you get to the top of the glacier, helicopter lands, and you get to get out. And you literally, I mean, I really felt like I was on top of the world. So Juno is an awesome opportunity to stop in. We also have Ketchikan. And this is a lot of native history, really great for salmon fishing because it is the capital of the world. This is actually what you're looking at the the picture over the creek. It's called Creek Street. And so this is where you've got Totem Bright National Park and you get to watch some um, sculptors creating new totem poles. They also have axe throwing, um, the Lumberjack Show, one of my very favorite, it's it's a fun family event and it talks all about, you know, how do the Lumberjacks of Alaska really, what do they do? And it really shows you all of the fun activities that they do partake in. And then finally, we have Skagway. And this is going to take you way back in time to the miners. And it really does follow the path, the, the look, the feel. In fact, that train that you're looking at is the White Pass Yukon Rail that goes into Canada. And what's unique here is it's 
the only shore excursion I know that you actually have to carry your passport because you go into Canada. And in order to get back into the U.S., you have to prove that you have a passport. So make sure if you decide to do this one that you've got your passport with you. But you can see there it is on the side of the mountain. If you have any issues <laughs> with height, I recommend you sit on the inside of the train, not on next to the window on the outside looking down. But it's really a unique little stop because it really does take you back and, you know, the whole miners and the saloons and just the the whole atmosphere in Skagway is very authentic. And as I mentioned earlier about that immersion program, it's for us, it's called North to Alaska. And this is our opportunity to really bring the locals both taste, culture, and experts to our guests on board. So up in the corner, you've got the axe throwing. Now, I haven't actually done this yet. Uh, that would be on my next trip to Alaska. But they teach you how to throw an axe. Not sure I'd be any good, but you know, hey, it's always worth a try. And certainly the food and the taste of Alaska. There you've got some awesome looking crab legs. And that is a big one, as well as the salmon and the halibut, as I'd mentioned earlier. But bringing on the local experts on that bottom picture, when we are in Glacier Bay National Park and you're looking at Marjorie Glacier right there, the ship just sort of sits in the area and it will do, a, you know, it continues very slowly to turn. So there's no bad seat in the house, keep that in mind. But we bring on the local experts. These are the park rangers, the naturalists, and they do some lectures just in some presentations to really talk to the consumer to say, what's happening in Alaska? You know, are the glaciers growing? Are they receding? What's the tundra like? What happens when it you know, gets super cold and then it melts and it freezes again? So it really gives you an opportunity to get to know the culture. Now, one thing that I'm going to just interject right here, because you will have the opportunity, no matter where you are on the ship, to see Marjorie Glacier, because like I said, the ship does turn. When my husband and I were in Alaska in 19, um, uh, 2019, we decided not to go up on deck with everybody else. We ended up, we stayed in our cabin, we had a balcony, we ordered a bottle of champagne, and you know we had our own little celebration right there. So when we were in Glacier Bay, we were just having a little sit back, relax, celebrating life, celebrating the fun and celebrating the beautiful, beautiful scenery of Marjorie Glacier in Glacier Bay National Park. So what else can you do with our North to Alaska immersion program so that we can really immerse our guests into the culture? Well, Straight on, you see the little puppies. Well, we offer something called Puppies in the Piazza. And in our Piazza area, we bring on the future Iditarod racers. And we usually have about eight to 12 puppies come on at a time. So you get to line up and you get to play with all the puppies. And these are the little guys that will run the Iditarod in the future. But right now, they're just a huge bundles of fun. They're lots of fur. They're lots of fun. And what's interesting is when they take them, you know, they rotate them in and out so they don't get too tired. When they go back to their pen, they just pass out because they're just going, 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 and then they're gone. But since we are talking about the Iditarod, the picture um, sort of catty corner, the woman with the long blonde hair and the white, the white dog, that is actually Libby Riddles, and she was the first woman in 1985 to win the Iditarod. And, you know, if you think about it, over 30 years ago, she was 18 years old when she did that. And that just amazes me. And she did this 1,100-mile trek by herself with her dogs 
across the Alaska tundra. So she comes on in Juno and she does about a 40 minute presentation. I highly recommend it. Uh, other things you can do when you're in Alaska, fly fishing, great in several of our destinations. We offer the um, Klondike Festival that's up in the corner. So lots of partying and fun going on, dancing going on on the ship. So those are the things that are going on as you're traveling through the inside passage up to where you would get off the ship in Whittier. And this is where you would have the opportunity to begin your cruise tour. Now the cruise tour, as you could see, it's the cruise plus the rail plus the lodges. And this is where, if you wanna see all of Alaska, this is what you wanna do. And this kind of puts it all together for you. So let's say you start on the cruise and a sample cruise tour itinerary there. Day one, you would get on the ship in Vancouver. And then throughout the cruise, you're going through the inside passage. You're gonna stop in Ketchikan, Juno, and Skagway, just like we talked about, into Glacier Bay National Park, getting the opportunity to cruise College Fjord. And then you will get off the ship and get onto our trains. It's called the Direct to the Wilderness and it will take you that day into Denali National Park. It's about an eight hour trip. So we serve breakfast and lunch. And so you really get the opportunity to see the Alaska scenery as well as the Alaska tundra. And then finally, you will connect with our wilderness lodges. And you might have a couple of nights in Denali National Park. You might go up into Fairbanks. It could include all kinds of opportunities. And this is where the expertise of travel pros can really help you design and create the vacation that best suits your needs. <laughs> so as I talked about our Direct to the Wilderness Rail Service, this is an exclusive to Princess. And that top picture shows you where the ship docks in Whittier and how close the train is. Like literally it is across the parking lot. So you get off the ship, you get on the train and you go the rest of the day and you will be in Denali that night. Now they are double decker trains. They're open air and glass dome. So the top piece, it's two levels. So the top level is all of the um, glass dome. So beautiful view, nothing is obstructed. But the lower level is where we offer our cafe cars. And this is also where we have some open opportunities. So if you wanna get outside, if the weather's nice, you wanna take pictures, get some fresh air, you can go right outside and take advantage of the Alaska air, fair, uh, air the fresh air and the tundra. And the last portion is going to be our wilderness lodges. And we at Princess own all of our lodges. And that's the other key issue about our cruise tours. We own and operate all of its components. We own our ships. We own the train. And we own all five of these wilderness lodges. We have the Denali Lodge, the Mount McKinley Lodge. They're actually in the Denali National Park region. Then we have the Copper River, which is east of the Denali area, and it's in Wrangell St. Elias National Park. Kenai is south of Denali, and that's where the Kenai National Park is. And then all the way north is where we offer the Fairbanks Wilderness Lodge. So this kind of gives you a picture as I had said, where all the different hotels, our wilderness lodges are located. Fairbanks is our farthest, most northern property. Both the Denali and the McKinley lodges are in the Denali National Park. Kenai is south, Copper River is east. To just give you a little bit of information about our wilderness lodges, the Denali Princess is our this is our flagship and it's on a campus style setting. It's on like 22 acres. It's our largest property, holds 663 rooms. This is at the entrance. It's about a mile from the park entrance, the national park entrance. 
overlooks the river. Right there's the river that it overlooks. We offer Fannie Q Saloon. Fannie Q, by the way, she is an old original homesteader from Alaska. So we just named the uh, restaurant after her. But it's an opportunity. It's a, you know, at night you can sit back, enjoy marshmallows and hot toddies, and just, you know, really take in everything that you've done that day on your tour. Now, the Denali Lodge is in the northern end of the National Park. The McKinley Lodge is on the southern end of the National Park. And we built this one specifically for its location. It is a 40 mile straight on to Denali, to Denali itself, the mountain itself. So it's a beautiful view. And if any of you have ever watched the show Treehouse Masters, in fall of 19, Pete Nelson opened our very own treehouse that he built on the McKinley Princess site. So it's a beautiful lodge. This is not for sleeping. It's just, it's, it has events there and it really gives you a true bird's eye view of Denali. And like on the ships where we have our North to Alaska and we have different presentations, well, here up in the corner, we do different presentations at the Hudson Theater. And the Hudson Theater, that plane that you see, Cliff Hudson was the very first Bushman to fly people into Alaska. So that is actually one of his planes. We've restored it. And it sits outside the Hudson Theater where they we might have presentations called Meet the Mountain Climber. And so people that have actually climbed Denali come and tell us about their experiences as well. Then we get into the Kenai Lodge. Now, you can see things are getting smaller. The McKinley Lodge only has about 450, which is rooms, which is 200 less than Denali. Well, this one only has 686 rooms. So it's a very small, very intimate, very private. It's more of a bungalow style. But what's unique is you'll notice in that picture in the corner, every room has its very own wood burning fireplace. So and there's firewood all over the place. You can just go grab it. And this is actually our highest scoring Princess Lodge because it is in just a neat location. And I really do highly recommend the opportunity if you can get down to Kenai, add that to your cruise tour. So it's just it's just small and people love it there. Now, another one of our small I, hotels is the Copper River Princess Wilderness Lodge. It, too, is only like 86, 85 rooms. It is in near the Wrangell St. Elias National Park. Great for fishing, great for outdoorsmen, lots of water sports here just because of its location. And then finally, we have our Fairbanks Hotels. And this is where you have the opportunity to do that panning for gold. And the pipeline is located there. And the Stern Wheeler Riverboat Cruise, really, really fun because it goes up and it goes down the river and it stops at different locations. So you might stop at an Indian village and get off and just kind of wander around. There was a dog camp and it talks about how to train the Iditarod racers. So it it's not just a little cruise down the river. It's an educational opportunity as you sail down the river. So just like shore excursions when you are on a ship, we also have land excursions when you are in Alaska. High energy, low energy, we have excursions for all walks of life, all energy levels. So if you're, you're low energy, go to the um, Husky Homestead and get to know the puppies. Maybe just take a walk and see the beautiful sights. If you're looking at high adventure, we've got kayaking, we've got rafting and fishing, ATVs. But, you know, the dog sleds, I, that is my bucket list. And when we were there, we were supposed to do a helicopter ride to the top of 
Denver Glacier, which is where the dog camp was, so I could mush. That is my bucket list and the day we wanted to do it. The helicopter had to go 5,000 feet to get to the top of Denver Glacier. The clouds were sitting at 2,000 feet. So all aircraft was grounded that day. So we had a very sad person on our hands, but we ended up doing that Yukon White Pass Railway and still had an awesome time. So now I just know I have to go back to Alaska because I will, I will get to mush on those dock sleds one of these days. So for those of you that are looking for I'm going to blow it out and do everything. The ultimate Alaska cruise tour is it. It's actually 17 nights. You will do a seven day cruise, but you'll do 10 nights on land. So you will spend two nights at all five of our properties. It is fully escorted and it includes the, the painting for gold. And what's also nice is this particular one, because it is considered what we call a connoisseur tour, it also includes your meals on land. So on most of our cruise tours, food is not included on land, but you can pre-purchase the meal package vouchers. Highly recommend that. It is well worth it. And because it, it we don't say, oh, you have to eat in this restaurant or you can only have this menu. No, you eat right off the regular menu. If you want to have the salmon that night, go for it. If you want to have the halibut the next night, go for it. So highly recommend the meal plan. But if you take the connoisseur tours, meals will be included. And it's also really nice to have an escort with you at all times on land. So a question I get oftentimes is, when is the best time to go to Alaska? Well, first of all, you can only go between May and September. Let's start there. High season in Alaska would be considered June, July, and August. And that's when there's a lot of family travel. We are great for multi-generation travel. We also call a skip gen, skip generation, where it's grandparents are taking the grandkids no mom and dad in the middle. They just grandparents and grandkids. We do a lot of that. Or we have the whole group come. Uh, so it's great for family vacations. Um, May and September would be considered shoulder season. So oftentimes if you're looking for maybe a little, trying to make it a little more price conscious, those would be the times to go. But really, anytime you're there, you're always going to see wildlife. There will always be, you know, sea life, land life. There's fishing pretty much all the time. Uh, during June and July, there's a lot of light. Keep that in mind. Uh, we sailed the week of June 5th. I think the sun went down. I mean, and this, this is hardly even going down. At 11.45 p.m., and, and keep in mind, sun going down means it just hit dusk. It does not ever get dark in Alaska in the summer. And sun came up at 2.45 a.m. So keep that in mind. It's just the way it is. So all the rooms have room darkening um, curtains. So not to, not to worry. Um, and oh, people that are always asking me about when when can I see the Northern Lights? Well, A, we're not going to guarantee it, but if you go as late in the season as possible and you're in um, Fairbanks, which is our farthest, most northern part, that would be what I would suggest. But this summer, we actually have, we just completed our Alaska sailings. Uh, we had 10 departures July through September, and the captain actually woke everybody up, and it was in Juneau, of all places. It was our lowest part of the itinerary. Got on the phone. It was like 2 in the morning. Now, he tried not to make it a big, like, you know, he tried to make it calm. This isn't an emergency. But if any of you would like to see the Northern Lights, 
I suggest you get up and get out on the deck as we speak. Pretty much everybody came out, their jammies, their sweatpants. It was okay. Everybody got to see the Northern Lights and, you know, it was in Juneau. It wasn't in our northern part, it was in more of a southern part. So you just never know when you might get to see that. So one thing to keep in mind about Princess, when you book a cruise with us, we offer something called Princess Plus, and we include all of the best perks that you are looking for. And it's our premier beverage package, unlimited Wi-Fi, and our daily crew incentive, which you may remember is called gratuities. So if you purchased each of these individually, it would come out to a $95 per day value. And how we have repriced it is only $40. So let's break down the $40. Just, I want you to know what kind of a deal this is. Well, your crew incentive, you normally pay about $15 a day for gratuities, and that covers all the wait staff and everybody that helps you um, throughout the cruise. Most people these days want Wi-Fi, so that's $10 a day if you would normally purchase it right off the, um, uh, off the cruise. So right there, of the $40, you have spent $25. That means that our premier beverage package is only $15 a day. And that includes the service charges. That extra 15, 18, 20%, that's already included in that. But it's not just for wine and beer and spirits. It's also for all of our non-alcoholic beverages as well. Our specialty coffees, the energy drinks, milkshakes, we offer bottled water as part of this. So whether you drink alcohol or you don't, it is a very good program. So pretty much our cruises become almost, but not quite an all-inclusive vacation. So you don't have to think about anything when you get on board. Now, for those of you that might be part of the military, we do have a special benefit just for you. It's additional onboard spending money, and this is available to active, retired, disabled veterans. It's available anytime and on any cruise. And once you have signed up with Princess, you never have to sign up again. Anytime you take a cruise with us, we will always include your military benefit as a thank you to all the military men and women who protect us every day. Easy Air is our own air program that you can purchase right on, um, on the Princess site. And we have no customization fees. It helps with um, late arrival protection. It's a worry-free booking because what you can actually do is go on the site. Once you've made your booking, you can go on the site and you can hold two options. You can, it's restricted air or flexible air. Restricted air would be just you book it, you buy it, you pay for it, you're done. Flexible would be where you actually would go in and hold the air schedule and the pricing. You don't have to pay for it until you make final payment. Well, maybe you come back in a month and you start looking at some of the new schedules and there's a better schedule. You can change it. That's the real advantage to our Easy Air program. It gives you a lot of flexibility. And as I said, you don't actually make final payment until you don't have to pay for the air until you make final payment with the cruise. So it becomes a one stop shop for you. So my last question to you is where are you going next? I hope it will be Alaska, but if you don't go to Alaska, please consider Princess in Europe, in Panama Canal, in Asia, in the Caribbean, anywhere around this beautiful, beautiful world that we live in. So I hope that you take the advantage of vacationing and know that we are opened up and we are ready to welcome you on board. And with that, I'd like to say thank you for joining Travel Pros and Princess Cruises tonight. Jennifer, any questions? Oh. Any?
I'm sitting here looking up this connoisseur escorted while you're talking, and I feel bad because I'm like looking at it and listening to you at the same time because I wanted to pull up a date. And for 2023, mm -hmm. because this is exactly what I want to do. Um, I know that you guys have the drink program that's already included. I know that your food is included. But the part that hit me was you know, the escorted part, and you get to go to all five locations. If, yeah. if I win, I'm going to do it. It's not an if, it's when. I, that's how many times am I going to go to Alaska? You know, I mean, I'm hoping to go more than once. But and, and I do recommend that because what we find is people repeat Alaska two or three times because wow. it is such a vast destination and there's so many really unique things to see. So even if you do the whole 17 days, you will come back because you'll say, I really didn't get to do this, which is why I'm going back because I am going dog sledding. <laughs> <laughs> Which that makes sense because mm -hmm. you can't. I mean, there's so many tours and options of things to do. There's no way to do it all in the first one. Right. And so that's why I'm, but so you just saw, switched my thinking. You know, it's like, I still probably want to do the whole 17 day um, myself the first time out. Mm -hmm. So that way I get to see it all. And then go back on a second one and then do the things I couldn't do on the first one. Right. If that, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So I'm really, I was looking up, when does your 2023 dates come out? They are available now. Okay, good. Because I'm on here and I had, uh, I see them on here. And the weather you were saying in May, um, it starts like mid-May and then June and July has the, um, the sun? Yes, yes. Okay. So I, just think of it as, you know, May and, June, May and September, animals are coming out of hibernation and they're going into hibernation. Gotcha. That, that's why there's movement going on there. Um, but high season is always June, July, and August. Good. That's the busy, busiest time of the year for Alaska. Well, and I can see how this would sell out because <laughs> just like plane tickets people don't understand that are like oh but i'm just going to jamaica why is it sold out already i'm like because it's segments right it could be just norfolk to charlotte may be sold out that could raise the whole price of the ticket so same thing is you know the 17 day you're taking multiple segments and right. putting it together even though you already have it you know as the company worked out some people may just buy a segment of it and pull inventory. Mm -hmm. And so it may not be there. And so that's really important, especially if you're wanting to do the cruise tour, like you're stating, it is something that you, um, you do book early and you do put your deposit down on the cruise tour for this long. Is it 300 or 600 per person normally for a deposit? It's generally about 400 a person. And that is refundable up until your final payment date. Mm -hmm. So the key part is you need to book it early. You're not losing out. They do have insurance in case something, you know, tragic happens and you're not able to travel. But the good thing is you get exactly what you want and you hold it. And then all you have to do is put it on your calendar. And now you're dream. going to work and dream <laughs> and you're working hard to get to that goal. And you know, and the one thing that's interesting, Jennifer, is anticipation of the vacation is where most of the happiness is gained. Yeah. Because it's you're planning and you're excited. It's like, what are we going to do? Where are we going to eat? What shore excursion are we going to do? And there's so much happiness in the anticipation of the vacation and that that's that makes it and so there's so much anticipation and excitement about alaska so this is why i that's why we're the number one cruise line because we have so much to offer our guests well it's really the only one i recommend to everybody and so i need to jump start this and glenda and i together we're going to jump start it and start 
letting people know like this is if if somebody was to ask me what do they need to book right now this is it Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I love all my tour companies. I love all our representation, but for somebody to plan for their future, this is my number one. And it's definitely now on my list and I'm going to be planning my 2023 now. Right. And I'll talk to you about putting a group together and hopefully everybody here can come join us. I think that would be so much fun. Um, and we get to do this together. I want to go mush too. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it when you said oh, mush. So, well, this has been again very educational. Um, I can't wait to share to uh, with you and with everybody out there and um, come along. Okay. And if you have any questions, of course, I didn't say this in the beginning, but email us. Our email is info at gotravelpros.com. You can always call us at 757-425-3737. As you see, we're partners with Alyssa, um, with Princess Cruise Lines, with all the tour companies we've offered you. Um, don't go online and book it yourself. Always go with a travel professional, whether it's me and Glenda or somebody that you know. Let them be in business for a while and know what they're doing. Um, but book with them. It, it doesn't cost you anything. And we are going to be your best friend in the travel world. Um, we, we know the tricks. We know who to call. And we're here to help you. So I really appreciate it again. And come join us again next week. Alyssa, thank you so much. We won't see you again probably until when? January? I think January is my next one. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. Well, hopefully we're going to have a lot for you before January. I can report to you and tell you, hey, we got all kinds of folks that are signed up. Oh, did you mention your November? Um, oh, and we have a, a special going on right now. Sorry. Thank you for reminding me. It's it's our fall frenzy. So it actually goes through November 2nd. So bookings that you make, it's up to $200 per stateroom in wow. additional onboard spending money. It's actually $50 a person. So if you have a uh, four in your stateroom, it would be $200. But that is something that we're offering in addition to the Princess Plus, where you're getting your drink package, your gratuities, and Wi-Fi. So it's all combinable. You know, and if you're part of military, that's combinable too. Wow. Well, um, I know I, one of the things is the kids usually get out of school um, around June 15th. Mm-hmm. And that would be another point. Um, I'm going to do a sales ad and let people know um, if they are going to be taking their children. They do need to book that now, especially for 2023, because I know 2022, right when the kids get out of school, is not available. But we might be able to help some folks get in there, but not like a large party. Um, but we try to work our magic yep. and people have canceled and we can grab it. So, but for now, I will, um, we're going to look at 23 and um, I really, again, appreciate it. Okay, and, great. Uh, I appreciate the time and giving me the opportunity to chat about our number one destination of Alaska. Awesome. All right. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks so much. You all have a good evening. You too. Bye-bye.